I love good law-abiding cops who are who are good people are doing what they do and I understand you have families to feed you're, you're just doing what you're told so you don't get fired from your job but you there is a problem that exists and at some point you have to make your decision on which side of the team you're on okay so the ATF has completely overstepped its grounds they are now actually showing up at people's homes to confiscate their firearms. Now, that sounds like an exaggeration, but it is not. They are actually going there to pick up any FRT equipment, any FRT modified equipment, because of a unconstitutional ruling that they made after the fact. So they want to go back and take these people's equipment retrospectively based on authority that they do not possess. Let's get into it. So here they are. They, they've showed up at a gentleman's house, the owner of Moonlight Industries. They're showing up at other houses as well. Some of these people are turning it over. Some are not. And, and here's, here's the thing. I want to explain to you what it is that we're talking about. So an FRT is a forced reset trigger, okay, which means... When you pull the trigger, the trigger is forced back and then will come back again. So now what the effect of this is, is that it effectively turns an AR style rifle into a machine gun effectively. Right. But it doesn't turn it into a machine gun legally. And there's a difference and the difference matters because if it's going to be legal, if it's going, if you're going to make it illegal to own one without the required permitting for a machine gun, then you need to fix the law. Nothing is illegal that is not against the law. And I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that. So here is the definition in the National Firearms Act. And this is on the ATF website, okay? For the purpose of the National Firearms Act, the term machine gun means any weapon which shoots is designed to shoot or can be readily restored to shoot automatically more than one shot without manual reloading by a single function of the trigger. Why does that matter? And why do I say it so slowly? Because in the end, right, it's pretty clear. The, the writing of this is I, a single function of the trigger. I pull the trigger back, it starts pop, 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 right? That, that's any, any, there's no way to redefine that in some way that makes you feel better. That's the definition. What a forced reset trigger does is it does move. And I'm going to show you this in a video comparison in just a moment. I found a cool one where the guy actually does a comparison of both triggers and, and shows you what the difference is. Now, the end result is very similar with respect to how far, how fast the bullets leave, leave the chamber and things like that. However, one requires a multiple reset of the trigger. One does not. So let's look at it. We're going to go for it and we're going to see how we do it. Well, open. That's fine. Guns on safe. Go not. guys so you can see that the finger comes back on the trigger and it has this little double tap action happening so the trigger breaks it gets forward set and then it breaks again and then forward set every individual bullet fired has one complete trigger motion that is initiated by the shooter's trigger finger while most of this action happens more or less subconsciously it is in fact a single trigger movement for a single projectile going downrange. Does not meet the qualification of what's labeled as a machine gun because of this. So you follow that, folks? You see where he's going with that? It does not meet the qualification. And it does not meet it because it requires one pull, no matter how quick or short, one pull for one bullet. All right, so depending on what side of the aisle you're on, you could say this company's genius for creating this thing, and, and or you could say, oh, they're terrible, they're going to cause death. However you feel, I don't care. What I care about right here is whether or not the ATF has the authority to do this, because the ATF does not. And here's an example. Now he's going to use an M16 fully automatic and give you an idea of what the difference is. And then at the end, you're going to see him top and bottom shooting both at the same time and, and see that they're very similar. All the way back to that full auto stance. Here we go. So you see what he's doing here, right? He's just holding the trigger. That's the difference, folks. It's not, it's not splitting hairs. It's a technical difference that is clearly demonstrable.
So that was a demonstration of both uh, of both rifles being shot side by side. You can see they both appear to be very much um, similar. He actually stated he thinks the FRT is actually at a, at a more effective weapon than the fully automatic. But the point is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you feel about it. It doesn't matter you know, whether you think it's right or wrong. What matters is there is no debate over whether or not the ATF has the authority to do this. There is none. There is none. The definition of a machine gun is clear. They cannot just change it because someone came out with new technology that doesn't fit the definition but does the same thing. They need to change the definition, and they cannot do that. Congress needs to do that. Okay, And depending on the Congress that's in play, you'll see if they do that or not. But the fact of the matter is they can do it tomorrow if they want to because they're accountable to us. The ATF is not. Now, to take this further, the ATF has actually gone door to door now, to, and still are to this day, going door to door to people's houses, trying to seize their legally purchased property because they decided late in the game they were going to change a definition, which was illegal for them to do in the first place. Here's the encounter. It's the owner of Moonlight Industries. You can find the channel on YouTube. Um, and, and they basically make equipment for our special forces, for tactical teams and things like that. He's going to explain it to these folks, and it's going to bug you out when, when you listen to this master class that he puts on for these ATF agents. And it really makes you wonder how many of these ATF agents actually do understand the Constitution. Yeah. I own the company Moonlight Industries. Okay. Oh, really? So we make, like, low visibility. Oh, really? We specialize in, like, uh, right now we have a contract with SEAL Team 6, actually. Okay. We make their... Uh, like low visibility MP7 rigs. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So, were you expecting us? Uh, well, what didn't <laughs> surprise me when I saw a guy in a plague carrier showing up. So. <laughs> well, got the Ultima OTBs on. So. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, so the reason why we're here is because um, I don't know. I'm sure you're aware that just recently the ATF um, classified the uh, FRTs, the the force sure. reset triggers, mm -hmm. um, as um, as uh, machine guns. Yeah. So we are aware that you may have purchased some of these FRTs. Okay. So now we are having like the whole agency has has to, um, is basically reaching out to these purchasers. That's incredible. And yeah. uh, we incredible. have to uh, pick them up. <laughs> you know they're okay. illegal. So. So I won't um, be answering any questions today. Um, I don't have any comments on this subject. Uh, I won't be uh, giving you anything. Okay, so you... Um, are, are you refusing to give us the trigger? I'm not refusing anything. I won't be answering any questions. So he's not refusing anything. He's just not going to be answering any questions. And, and that's exactly how you handle that. That's exactly how you handle that. Because there is a difference. Because you can't refuse something. If you don't answer questions, you're well within your rights to do it. He hasn't broken any law. If you sit there and say, I'm refusing to comply, well, now you're acknowledging that there's something to comply to, and there isn't. The reason that they're there is, is illegal. The act that they are committing by being there is illegal, and he needs to comply with nothing. Okay. Um, but, okay, so we are aware that you, do, you did purchase FRTs. Again, you wouldn't be in trouble if you just give those up to us or okay. if you sold them you can tell me you sold them sure you know okay. and you again you're not going to be in trouble for that i understand so i'm um, we're just here honestly like just to pick them up and, sure and sure <laughs> it's a bigger it's a bigger conversation than what you're having right now you know you, you decide as you go the rules right um, again, that's not something I decide. It's not. I know. You guys are just here. You guys are just here. Yeah. I don't disagree with you at all. I understand. I, I don't want to be here anymore than you want me to sure. be here. It, well, it's, the problem is, is you are the people who, who go and knock on the doors, right? Mm -hmm. So when they make new laws and you break them, or you go against the citizens, because they've spoken what they buy and what they do. The citizens are speaking, but the government is making their decisions on what they think. They're not being servants to the citizens, right? And, and, and right. all we're saying is, you know, like, I mean, we, like you said, you know, we just, hear, we, we are the ones that just come and knock on the door. We sure. just enforce the laws. We don't make the laws. So, sure, I understand. You know, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Um, like I said, we're, we're, you're not in trouble. I mean, No, and I understand them. that. You know, no, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> exactly. That's, so, yeah, I don't have, I love... We're, Good law-abiding cops who are who are good. 
So you hear what she says there, like, you're not in trouble. You know, two themes you're going to hear from this woman, do through here. One is, I don't make the laws. We don't make the laws. And the default of, we're just going door to door, but we don't make the laws. And the other one is, you're not in trouble. And, and he just sets her straight right there, like, yeah, well... I didn't do anything wrong. So, and then she just sort of laughs and it's like a nervous laugh. You can see, you can see she's not comfortable in this situation. You can tell by the way she's humming and, um, well, um, like we just want to, they're making us, everybody's got to do it. All of these defaults that she's throwing out there to try and justify why they're there. But in the end, it's got to be going through her mind right now. Like, is this illegal? What we're doing? Like, hopefully it is. Hopefully that is going through her mind and she is starting to open her eyes a little bit at the fact that she's being used as essentially a stormtrooper to carry out orders as a minion. That's not what she signed up for, I'm sure, but she's there and she's doing it and she still doesn't get it, though. L listen to this. I love good law abiding cops who are who are good people are doing what they do. And I understand you have families to feed. You're, you're just doing what you're told so you don't get fired from your job. But you, there is a problem that exists, and at some point you have to make your decision on which side of the team you're on. So I won't be answering any questions. Boom. Here, here's every time you know you hear, you know every time you see one of these agents, or and it's not just all ATF. FBI does this, even even you know New York City Police and, and others. All right. The fallback is always doing my job, right? I'm just doing my job. I just got to feed my family. But, but like he makes a very good point there that, yeah, I get it. And he's respectful. Like I understand. And he really does. And so do I. It, I, I understand that they need to feed their families. I understand, you know, you don't necessarily want to go home and tell your wife you just quit your job. And you have no game plan. And, you know, like, but you're just not, you wouldn't take an order. And that's that. However... He's also making it clear that at some point, that excuse becomes old. And at some point, you know, you have to make a decision whether or not you're on the citizens team or you're on the government's team. Because if the government is asking you to do unconstitutional stuff, and you're willing to go out and do it under the premise that this is my job, well, then you're on their team. You're not on our team. And that, you're not being forced. That is... You can just make a decision. And this woman, like this guy gets it. Like he kind of stays quiet. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that he's thinking in his head, and I could be wrong, of course, but he's like, you know what, this guy's right. I don't want to be here. F this. I'm not taking anything. <laughs> the woman, though, she's got a little work to do. Questions? If I'm not being detained, I'm not under arrest, I'll just be leaving now. Okay. Um, I won't be able to help you with what you're okay. trying to find. Um, so, and just to be clear, so then now you know that if you were to be in possession of these FRGs, then then you would be um, basically uh, breaking the law. You okay? be then you will be breaking the law. Listen to his response, Wicked. You okay. you the ATF claims that they they're making rules, but there's no there's been no vote. There's been no congressional hearing um, that says you have the law. You don't make law, right? We I don't. Yeah, the yeah, ATF doesn't make law. Again. Um, no. Again, but it's I don't want. Listen, I right now I see my when he said the when he corrected her because she again was like I don't, inferring that they do, and he said he made it clear, ATF doesn't make law either. No idea how to respond to that. She had no idea how to respond. I just moved on. There's been no congressional hearing um, that says you have the law. You don't make law, right? We I don't. Yeah, yeah. the ATF doesn't make law. Again. Um, no. Again, but it's I don't want. Listen, I right now I seem like a huge dick. Like I'm like fuck you guys, but I really don't feel that way at all. Mm -hmm. I just can't, in good faith, when I make the gear for every high end special operations unit in America right now. That's all I do. That's all I do is support these freedom fighters. A lot of law enforcement SWAT guys. I can't take part in an overstep past the line that says this is or is not legal. Just because you have a badge, you can still do crimes, right? Right. So if the American people feel like the ATF is committing crimes right now, I can't help you. I'm sorry. I just okay. can't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate your time. Okay. I'm thank you. And there it is. Right. So he has laid it all out. He's done it correctly. Step by step. 
you know, he, he didn't refuse anything. He didn't answer any questions, but he took the extra time to give them a little civics lesson because that woman clearly didn't understand that she should not have been there. So the, the next piece that I want to talk about is this right here and how that is how you prevent that from happening. This is how you prevent that from happening. Okay. If you, if you didn't understand this, this situation does not just fall in the wheelhouse of amending the constitution. It falls in the wheelhouse of this specific convention of states movement to amend the constitution under the premise of government overreach. There are three ter- three topics, term limits, fiscal restraints, government overreach. This fits right in the wheelhouse of government overreach. It is all about regulatory agencies. So if you want to learn more about how, what this movement is about, why we want to amend the constitution to, to restrict the power of the federal government, how it cannot get, you know, you're going to listen to people go, oh, it'll go crazy. It'll rewrite the whole constitution. It's nonsense. Read, read, or ask questions. Where do you ask questions? You can ask questions to Convention of States Action, or you can just show up at, at 5.30 p.m. every Wednesday night. I'm streaming to, to Rumble, um, Rumble, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. And jump on the stream and leave some comments and ask your questions. And I stop the broadcast as soon as I see them to answer any questions on Article 5 and why it is the most powerful weapon that the United, that the United States people have in order to take back our government. You can, you can sign the petition at www.thepatriotthinktank.com slash COS. There is, a, there is a link right there to sign the petition. It will take you over to Convention of States uh, website where they will send a letter on your behalf to your local representative. But learn how this works, folks. Learn how this works. Educate yourself. Because this is it. There's only one method. Electing Donald Trump does not save the country. Stop lying to yourself. It's not what happens when he gets elected. It makes things less horrific. It does not save the country. It will do nothing for the American dollar. It will do nothing for term limits. It will do nothing to shut down these regulatory agencies. Only we can do that. Those things have already been virtually solidified by thousands of Supreme Court decisions in the past. Presidents cannot overrun that. The people can. And this is how we do it. Do not let people scare you out of your power. Do not be afraid of the deep state. Let them be afraid of you. This is where we're going, folks. This is the only path. I'm going to keep pumping it at you until you finally read enough to understand that. And I don't mean that as an insulting thing. We have state legislatures all over the place who just simply don't read. And then and they, they adamant about positions that they're not well read on. And then when a constituent from the grassroots finally gets them to read up on it, they suddenly become a sponsor of the petition and end up freaking getting it through their state. South Carolina did this. Uh, West Virginia did this. It goes on and on and on and on and on. We have 19 states on board. We need 34 total. Only you can make this happen at the local level. Once you click to sign the petition, there's a button to volunteer. Click that button. Someone local to you, not some national representative, someone local to you who lives near your house, near your neighborhood, another concerned American citizen will reach out to you. And you know what? Maybe you're going to find yourself in a place where your particular district needs a district captain. Maybe you think they need better leadership. Maybe you maybe you can bring that leadership. Maybe you can give money, but you don't have any time. Maybe you can give time, but you don't have any money. You know, there's always some, maybe you have a skill in what you do that can help. Maybe, you know, whatever it may be. Everybody's got a role to play in this fight. There are millions of us in it. There, everyone's got a role to play. And, and so it's important that you start looking into how this works and, and why it's going to be so effective. All right. So again, join me every Wednesday night, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's California time for my international folks. And and we will be discussing today's topic as well as Convention of States and how we and what we can do to try and turn this country back in the right direction and start playing offense instead of always playing defense. Don't forget to subscribe to the Rumble channel. 